right, everybody, welcome to endocrinology. So today we're going to cover within the next one and a half hours or so pretty much everything that you need to know for your boards with thyroid and adrenal glands. Okay. So let's start off first with thyroid. Okay. So when you think about thyroid gland, let's start with hyperthyroidism. Okay. Whenever it comes to hyperthyroidism, everybody already knows what kind of symptoms they're going to come with, right? What kind of symptom would somebody present with when it comes to hyperthyroid? Okay, so weight loss, tachycardia, anxiety, um, what else? The hair of the, uh, the thinning, or no. thinning of hair can happen, yeah. sure, and then you can also have, uh, you know, diarrhea, right? Incre basically, everything sympathetic is going to get hyper accentuated, essentially, right? Now, when you think about hyperthyroidism, what's your number one cause for hyperthyroid? What's that? It's Graves' disease. So Graves' disease is, in fact, going to be your number one cause when it comes to hyperthyroidism. What are the other reasons why somebody would get hyperthyroid? Overdose. Overdose on? So levothyroxine. So if somebody took surreptitious levothyroxine, that could be another reason for it. So Graves' is one, right? And then surreptitious is another one. You said Hashimoto's. But doesn't Hashimoto's cause hypothyroidism? In, in so that's another thyroiditis you're thinking about. But when you think about it, number one, say we call it Graves, right? What if I drew something like this and put multiple nodules on the gland? Or multinodular goiter. If somebody's got a multinodular goiter, that means you thyroid gland has got multiple nodules and some of those nodules can actually get hyperactive if not all of them so multinodular goiter right is another one to think about number three is if i throw a thyroid gland like this and do just one nodule like that right what is that called it's a toxic adenoma right so these are your main important causes to think about when it comes to hyperthyroid so graves multinodular goiter toxic adenoma and number four we can pretty much put all of your thyroiditis, right? All of your thyroiditis is going to come in. So anything that destroys your thyroid gland that leads to hypothyroid in eventually, initially will cause hyperthyroid state, okay? What about number five is what you said. When somebody's taking surreptitious or taking a lot of levothyroxine, right? Okay, so let me put it this way. The board question is going to pretty much ask you the first question is, well, they're going to give you a patient who looks hyperthyroid based on the clinical stem. They're going to ask you, what's your next step in order for you to diagnose this patient? When you suspect hyperthyroidism, what's your next step to do? TSH. TSH. Your first test to do is going to be TSH, right? Now, what's going to happen to your TSH if you are hyperthyroid? T4, very good. So, TSH is number one, followed by free T4 is what you're going to look for. What if you get a free T4, but the free T4 is normal? Subclinical. Well, it's not subclinical per se. If somebody's clinically having symptoms, right? You won't really won't think of subclinical. Imagine somebody's truly symptomatic, right? But you get a T4 level and it's normal. What would you check for that? Pretty much going to happen. So now when it comes to your diagnosis, why does Graves' disease happen? What's that? You have thyroid receptor antibody. Good. So you have antibodies that's actually going and stimulating your thyroid gland. So you would check for what would happen to your thyroglobulin levels in a patient who is abusing levothyroxine. If you're not, what do you use thyroglobulin for? To find. Can I have this board? Store the thyroid Okay, so we say that this is your thyroid follicles, okay? In order for you to form thyroid hormones, what you do is, first off, you take iodine, convert this to something called iodinium, which is I+. Bring this into the cell, and inside the cell, you actually have carrier protein, which is called thyroglobulin, okay? Thyroglobulin is present. And on the thyroglobulin, you have tyrosine residues attached to it, okay? You take this I plus and attach it to thyroxine, which is an amino acid, to form 
you take I plus and attach the tyrosine, you get monoiodotyrosine. We got drugs, number one, right? Number one, drugs, we need to know about your thioamides, okay? What are the other forms of treatment you have? Okay, so symptomatic drugs, okay? <coughs> symptomatic drugs, which is typically beta blockers. What else? You can actually give iodine. Right, so radioactive iodine, which is I131, right? Radioactive iodine to destroy the gland. And number four is? Surgery. Surgery. So for the boards, you need to know when each one of them is indicated. So let's start with thioamides, right? What are the two thioamides you have? Which beta blockers do we like to use? You like to use atenolol or pro why? Exactly. So it blocks your peripheral conversion, which is your deiodinase enzyme. So that's the reason we prefer these beta blockers. And again, most of the time when somebody is having hyperthyroid state, you have sympathetic overactivation. So you actually control most of your symptoms that way, right? Okay. Now, when it comes to number three, radioactive iodine. When would you use radioactive iodine to treat your patients? Okay, so when it comes to iodine, know when to do it as first line and when not to do it. Those are the questions they're going to ask you. Okay, number four, surgery. When would you do surgery? Right, if somebody's got a large goiter, right? If somebody's got a large goiter sitting on your neck and causing compressive symptoms, what, what are you compressing on your neck? Trachea, so you can have you know obstruction to your airways or esophagus. what's behind esophagus, or you can have hoarseness of your voice. So if you have obstructive symptoms, then you actually would do surgery. Okay, so that's how you're basically going to talk about your treatment when it comes to your hyperthyroidism. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, when it comes to hyperthyroid, specifically Graves' disease. Okay, when you talk about Graves' disease, they like to talk about Graves' ophthalmoplegia. So if somebody's got Graves' ophthalmopathy, how do you treat that? So that's going to be most of your hyperthyroid state to treat them. Okay, so subclinical hyperthyroid is that. Okay, I think that's all for hyperthyroid. Thank you for watching. If you like our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you get notified when a video is released every week. Have fun studying. We'll see you on the next one.